Hey guys, it's Sandro here with another full detailing video today on this Pocket Rocket Audi S1. Now these S1s are actually quite a rare car, at least here in Australia, with only a small amount making their way to our shores. The car's new to the owner, who's a colleague and friend, and it was used in a custom training course, which you'll also see later on. The goal with this car and the training classes was focused around paint correction in removing as much of the paint defects as possible within the time frame as well as paint protection focusing in on ceramic coatings as that was the goal of the two trainees who were actually brothers here from interstate one of which had started his own detailing business and the other who just wanted to improve his own detailing skills so he could apply it to restoring his own cars. But in order to get to the paint correction stage, the car had to undergo a decontamination process of surface preparation, which I did myself the day before, so that we'd be ready to rock for the paint correction training the following day. As always, I'll have a link to the products used in the description box, but for now sit back and enjoy this preparation stage, and I'll pick it up again once the car is in the paint correction bay.
So with this Audi S1 fully decontaminated, blown dry, given an IPA wipe down, and with my training setup complete, I decided to have a closer look and inspect the paint to see what we were up for in the way of paint correction. Now after looking back at this footage during the editing stage of this video, the blue paint honestly looks quite good on camera and far better than it did in person. But that's just how it goes with filming some paints, especially those with lots of metallic flakes that tend to blow out on camera. But as we progress during the paint correction stage, I'll do my best to show you some before and after shots on this blue paint to try and clearly display the condition of the paint and what was actually achieved. And as we move on to inspecting the flat black paint on the roof, you really should be able to see quite obviously the current condition of the paint and those existing defects. There's obviously a layer of wash induced swells mixed in with some more random isolated deeper scratches as well as quite a few scattered water and bird poo etchings. And I'm not sure if you can clearly see it, but there is quite a patchy finish caused by some hazed areas, most likely due to oxidation, as well as some previous machine polishing that wasn't refined all that well. There's also some random sticky stains, like drips of some sort, that just wouldn't come out during the decontamination process and feel like glue of some sort. After spending some time measuring the thickness of the paint, I could see that we did have a healthy amount of existing clear coat, with even a greater amount of overall thickness on the black painted roof areas. The only area that I did measure a drop in paint thickness was the rear right quarter panel that also had some heavier buffer holograms, indicating that someone had heavily compounded the paint in that section previously. But overall the paint thickness was largely intact and all original with no repairs to be seen. So a few hours into the training class, we had gone through all the various areas of paint correction, such as surface preparation, lighting, machines, compounds, pads, and had practiced techniques on the test panels, also looking at the variables presented when working with hard to soft paints and with various levels of moderate to severe defects. The car was also given another IPA wipe down, the trims were masked and we all measured the paint together in an effort to run through all these vital steps in preparation for working on the actual vehicle. The next step was to perform a test section to see which combination of polisher, pad, compound and technique would render the best results on this particular paint. Now being that the defects were more than just light swirls, but not extremely severe, a fantastic starting point would be a polishing or intermediate pad with a medium or one step compound. As far as technique goes, another great starting point is a mid to slightly high machine speed 
with just moderate pressure, relatively slow arm movement, and just three passes in about a half metre work section. Now one thing that I always talk about is knowing how to assess your results and how to move forward based on those results. This is actually the hardest part of paint correction in my experience. Learning to use machines, especially with dual action polishes, isn't all that difficult and just takes a little practice to hone your skills. But understanding how to read paint in relation to cut and defect removal, as well as clarity, gloss and refinement, takes a bit more time to really develop an eye for it. And even more crucial is developing the ability to understand what your next step is based on a test section. Do you need to be more or less aggressive? Do you need to adjust your technique to address these things or adjust your products or both? And if so, how? As with any trade or craft, these questions get answered along the way the more you practice and the higher your own personal standard and abilities are. But having a good foundation to build on is absolutely vital, as there is just way too much information out there that can really set you off on the wrong path. Now I know it's really hard to see the results on video on this highly metallic paint, but I'll do my best to talk you through the results we were seeing in person. And once we get to the flat black paint, it really should be much clearer in the footage. The results in the first test section showed a very minor removal of the existing defects but actually amplified the gloss and clarity extremely well. This would indicate that the paint is on the harder side and that we would need to increase our aggression to remove more of those defects. However, being that the finish was quite good, this indicates that we wouldn't need a less aggressive combination to obtain a perfect finish. And it's always important to keep these things in mind and dissect every test section to gather as much information as possible. Now for a second test section, we stepped up to a coarse cutting compound and also up to a light cutting foam pad as we were more than just a slight step away from removing the defects to an acceptable level. So the slight aggression increase in both compound and pad should in my experience get the paint closer to removing all the defects, hopefully in a single set of passes. I also slightly adjusted my technique using a touch faster machine speed and adding an extra fourth row pass to allow this particular compound more time to effectively cut and finish down to its full potential. This is another really important factor to understand. You need to spend time with your compounds to truly discover and unlock their full potential. All compounds are different, and if you just keep on jumping from one compound to another without properly exploring their characteristics, you'll never really appreciate what they can really do. I know I show a lot of testing with a lot of different products on this channel, but that's because it's my job to test and give feedback on detailing products. So especially for you guys just starting out, just try a couple of compounds that appeal to you and spend some time with them, seeing how they behave on different pads, machines, and with longer and shorter polishing cycles, with more or less pressure, and on harder and softer paints, and so on. And you may be surprised in what you actually discover. Now this second section actually came up extremely well. I'd say that a good 90 to 95% of the defects were gone, and the finish was still pretty much perfect, with no haze whatsoever. So after using a more aggressive compound than pad that removed almost all the defects, the finishing quality is just as good as the previous section where I used a finer pad and compound. So this reaffirms that the paint on this Audi is definitely harder and not fussy or sensitive at all, which has allowed me to be more aggressive to eliminate more of the defects yet still retain a perfect finish. Now overall, both the cut and finish is to a high standard with this combination, and for most jobs I'd be more than happy with these results. But what if I wanted to say, get more like 90 to 99% defect removal in a single set of passes? And that's actually a question I got from the students. The answer is that I'd need to once again step up my aggression, and I'd most likely move to a fiber based pad in the form of microfiber or wool. So for a third test section, I used a medium wool pad with a different coarse cutting compound. The reason I changed to this particular wool pad is that it will outcut almost every foam pad yet still finish extremely well. 
Well, the reason I changed the compound isn't so much about its aggression, but rather how the previous compound works exceptionally well with foam pads, while this compound works exceptionally well with fiber-based pads. And that's again only something I discovered about these two compounds by taking the time to really get to know them well. Now when looking at the cut and defect removal in this section, it's easily within that 95 to 99% bracket. So it's safe to say that we obtained a greater defect removal or leveling ability with this third combination. But just as impressive and even surprising is that there's no real distinguishable difference in relation to finish with this combination, also finishing with near perfect gloss and clarity. This is the whole reason why it's important to spend a little time on your test section. There is absolutely no rule that has to govern what combination you use and what your own personal goal and outcome should be. But once you explore all your options and see the results that can be achieved, then you have all the information you need to make the best and most informed decision that will get you your desired result with the greatest efficiency and outcome. Now we obviously had a different paint on the roof, and we had no idea whether it would be harder, softer, or more difficult to correct. Ideally, if we could use the same combination with success, that would save a lot of time and effort. So in the case where you are dealing with different paints, even on cars that have certain resprayed panels, it can be a good option to just test your winning combination, and sometimes it may in fact work. In this particular case, the same combination did in fact remove almost all of the existing defects in a single pass. And although it also amplified gloss and clarity, the finish was far from perfect, with quite a noticeable amount of haze and micro marring left behind. Now, although I unfortunately don't have all the footage here to show you guys, I also tried the first and second combinations to see if I could in fact remove the defects and still finish down well on this black paint in a single step. It turned out that it just wasn't possible on this more sensitive paint to both level out the defects and finish down perfectly in a single step. So unlike the harder and less sensitive blue metallic paint, this softer flat black paint required a second step to achieve a high gloss finish. So using the same pad as we did in the first test section on the blue paint, we stepped down to an even finer finishing polish which was able to restore gloss and clarity in a second and final stage of polishing. It's also important to note that it took a couple of tests and adapting our technique to get that perfect finish. So I ended up reducing my machine speed and increasing my arm speed as well as halving the amount of polish on the pad, which in the end all these little adjustments made all the difference in really bringing out the maximum gloss and saturation out of the paint. After all the test sections and spending a bit of time going through some more steps and methods and techniques surrounding paint correction, we all got down to work on correcting the paint on this Audi S1.
Now something I've talked about in a few of my past videos is the human variable element that plays a massive role in the results each of us obtain when polishing automotive paint or really using almost any detailing product. This is actually one of the main reasons why some people love and have a great experience with some products while other people hate and have bad experiences with the very same products. Machine polishes, pads and compounds are set and completely consistent in what they do, so they don't change based on who's using them. But what does change is the human variable element. Unlike machines that are very consistent, humans are quite inconsistent. And as such, those inconsistencies largely dictate whether some of us will have success or failure even in something as basic as polishing car paint. I bring this up because even though all three of us were using the very same machines, pads and compounds with the same basic methods and techniques, all three of us were achieving noticeably different results and the only variable here was our own human influence. So even just subtle differences in pressure, arm movement, pad angle and work section sizes is enough to create large enough differences to change the outcome and results. What I demonstrate to my students and even to you guys watching should always just be a starting point to get you on the right track. But it's ultimately up to you guys to find that right combination and assess your own results as that and only that is the only way you can get the answers to the questions you're after in relation to what products and techniques you should be using. Unfortunately, I can't tell you what you should be using to correct your paint based on its color and the make and model of your car. What you see on the paint is the answer to all those questions. And once you learn to read paint quite well and understand the influence of your products and techniques, that's the hardest part of paint correction solved. So you'll actually see throughout this paint correction process a few adjustments in the combinations and techniques that all three of us were using. And my largest role during this whole training is just to guide the students in the right direction so that they can start to properly understand how to read and respond to their own results.
Now, it's extremely rare for a car to be fully completed during any of my detailing classes, as the focus is always on the students getting the absolute most out of the classes, rather than just being hired labour to finish my detailing jobs. It's also the reason I don't use customers' cars, as it takes the pressure off and allows me to put all my focus on the training. However, I do almost always end up finishing the cars in my own time, and you will see this car at the end in its final completed stage.
Now with all the paint corrected and the carb ready to be protected, I set up once again for the coating and advanced paint correction class. After a bit of discussion on coatings and some training on the area, all three of us actually did ceramic coat the entire vehicle, including the paint, trims, wheels and glass. And the students did an absolutely amazing job. And based on their feedback, it was a great and valuable learning experience. However, I didn't film that part of the training class as I wanted to just focus on the training without the distraction of filming. Instead, I decided to give the car a second coat of all the coatings and film that part so that I'd have a complete start to finish video to show you guys in the end. So the wheels were ceramic coated with Nova Pyro, which I've used and gone through many times in my videos. But basically the main reason I really love this wheel coating is that it's super quick and super easy to apply. Basically wipe it on, work it evenly onto the rim and then immediately level it down. It looks amazing, it holds up against your wheel cleaners and lasts a good 6 to 12 months. For the glass, we actually used Nova glass to protect all the glass, including the windscreen and side glass. You'll find that almost all nano windshield coatings do have a similar application in that they almost immediately flash as you apply them. And it's always best to apply two to three consecutive coats per application and always make sure the glass is previously polished as this will usually double the life of the coating. And in my experience, a quality windshield coating that has been properly applied should see you through a good year or so, depending of course on use and weather. So with the wheels and glass given a second coat of their ceramic coatings, it was now time to do the same on the paint and trims. The first coat was actually applied about two hours prior on a mid temperature to slightly cool day. The coating used was Nova Pro, which again I've shown on this channel many times, so I'll keep it brief. Pro does tend to flash quite quickly, but as the weather was starting to drop even further into the mid teens Celsius, the wipe off was about at the 4 minute mark, whereas previously in the initial coat we were more around the 2 to 3 minute mark before wiping it down. I started working two sections at a time leapfrogging from one section to the other as that worked out to be the most efficient method based on the flash and wipe off times. All the paint, plastic and rubber trims were coated, working in a general top to bottom pattern around the car. And after quite a long two days of training and filming, this stunning Audi S1 was finally completed. A special thanks goes out to the two trainees that were fantastic students and put a lot of effort into making this little hot hatch look absolutely amazing and well beyond what the owner expected to see, who incidentally was so grateful and completely wrapped with the results. I'll leave you guys with the rest of the footage and the final shots of this Audi S1 done and dusted. As always, I really hope you guys enjoyed and found this video useful. Please like, comment and subscribe to this channel to show your support for these videos and I'll see you guys soon.